Thank you so much for uh, being here today. I'm thrilled to be joined by our Chief Administrative Officer, Lisa Haskell. Lisa, thank you so much for being here today. How are you doing? I'm awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped to be here and chat with you and uh, chat with everybody else. So looking forward to seeing all the questions pop up as well. Uh, well, it's fantastic. Um, you know, I can see a good number of everyone joining. So as Lisa mentioned, please do, um, you know, pop your questions in the comment box. We'd love to address them. Um, but yeah, thank you for joining us and joining this uh, Meet the Tide Team events um, where we introduce you to um, Tide's leader and give you an exclusive insight look at our company culture, what the team is working on and uh, what's coming next for us really. So, um, and once again, this is also an opportunity for uh, for you guys to ask all your questions about Tide, your question about Lisa, her role, her mission. We will talk about this, but please do do make sure to, to comment and ask your questions. Uh, fantastic, everyone is saying in the comments, yes, you can. we can see you both, you are on, hello. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. So uh, let's start right in, um, Lisa. Let's start with some introduction. Could you tell us about your background, uh, what you studied, your first jobs? Yes, yes, of course. Um, so first of all, um, I'm Ukrainian. Um, so you probably can tell from the accent that it sounds like I'm American, but actually uh, I was born in Ukraine and moved to America when I was almost 12. Right. Um, so, which is a really good um, kind of middle point in your childhood where you're neither one or the other in a way and you'll always have a little bit of an accent so americans can usually hear something off with my accent when i speak um and, uh, they really did, did give me a really great perspective on uh america actually you know mm -hmm. coming to america was very very strange uh, experience for me um very different culture very different values from ukraine um and it really allowed me to <laughs> to learn a lot and yeah. to kind of i think it taught me to be very uh flexible Right. Uh, in my approach because um, and, and try to understand and assimilate with many different cultures. When I first came to America, I, I joined a school that was mostly made up of immigrants, you know, immigrants from Bangladesh and India and Mexico and Honduras and Eastern Europe. And it was very strange because everybody came from completely different areas and they came to one country uh, to hopefully, you know, improve their futures. That's what the parents were doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I've definitely had really interesting experience and i think it's shaped who i am right now um just trying to be appreciative of all different cultures out there and really yeah. you know, every different culture brings its own set of benefits and its own interesting kind of like that little sparkle um mm -hmm. and, I, and i think that that experience of moving to america and the, the kind of a teenage pre-teenager years really helped with that um then i uh, had the dream of course i was in los angeles and everybody in la is in the movie industry so my dream was to be a tv producer so i went to film nice. school um for college uh but i quickly realized that uh it's not all fun and games it's actually really hard work and it's very hard to make it in the industry and um and, and i wasn't actually that passionate about the whole thing right you know me was more of a teenage dream yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like one of those things, you know, you change with, with time, you realize, you know, things are not as you might see, see as they are. And it, I, I do love media. I consume it all the time, TV, movies, music. Uh, and it does brighten up my, my day. And, and it's a great conversation starter. But I didn't find a lot of meaning in that work. Right. Uh, and for me, it's very, very important to to have meaning, to to be able to also think analytically and have challenge in my life. Um, and so I decided to uh, go to law school, actually, because I, I had a friend whose dad was a lawyer and I interviewed him and he seemed to have a very interesting life solving, problem solving on a daily basis. Uh, he was more on the corporate side of things. So making transactions happen, growing companies, that seemed very interesting to me. It's a completely different set of challenges. So I went to law school and then I got very, very lucky. I really believe that life is kind of a mixture of hard work and luck. Right. You can't really win if you don't get lucky. You do have to get lucky once in a while. But once you do get lucky, you really have to take advantage of that luck and really work hard and kick it, you know, kick it <laughs> and then just basically make the most of it. And then with that combination, you're going to keep moving forward and forward and forward. Um, and that's what happened to me. I got very lucky. I joined a uh, one of those tech law firms, a really famous tech law firm in San Francisco that uh, incorporated Apple, took Facebook public. You know, they had the tech companies that they represented were like, are some of the best in the world. 
Yeah. And I got to be a corporate lawyer for these tech startups anywhere from incorporating them. You know, my name is in probably like 10, 15 different companies and corporation papers. You know, one guy coming in. Yeah, it's crazy. A founder coming in or two guys coming in or ladies coming in and you help them basically, okay, I have this idea. Okay, let's get it going. Let's file incorporation papers. Let's raise this money. And then all the way up through either selling the company to a larger player or to going public. So I've taken Candy Crush uh, Maker King public, you know, some years ago. That was really fun, too, because you get to meet the team. You get to talk to them about the game. You get to play the game. Um, so it was that's so really exciting on the, and, and truly, truly a journey, right? An adventure. Yeah, it really, it really is. And, and, and what's great about that experience is that I got to see all kinds of different ways of uh, the way startups work, right? From right. founders who are right. huge geeks and engineers and just really focused on technology, from founders who are just much more philosophical and focused mm -hmm. on the values. And, um, and you see the companies that are able to scale and the companies that kind of start fumbling around the 20 employee mark or 100 employee mark or 500, you know, things stop stalling and, and then it doesn't go places. So that really gave me a good view about what it takes to take a company successful and take it to the next level. And uh, again, I got very lucky. I think through hard work, one of my clients noticed me and um, they asked me to join as their first legal uh, advisor in-house. So I went in-house uh, at a company called Gusto, which is a small business focused payroll benefits, HR and FinTech now. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, grew the legal team, grew the company from, you know, 150 or 200 employees to a thousand through the legal team um, really participated in all the different decisions you know got to see the scaling it was amazing amazing experience um, and then it was time for me to move to Europe it's been my long time dream and as I mentioned you know it's very important to have luck and hard work but you also have to have direction you have to have goals that you're working towards otherwise you're going to be like you know like right. the tumbleweed in the wind yeah. um, and so my husband and I decided that it was a big goal of ours to live in Europe. Uh, it's, it's something I wanted to do. So we decided 2019, you know, come hell or high water, we're making it happen. That was the year. That was the decision. We are moving to Europe. Yes. Right. Yes, we're going to make it happen. And uh, yeah. And, you know, once you make a decision, you start taking steps towards uh, making it happen. My husband got an opportunity to come here with his, his company. And then I started looking for work. And my first uh, reason why I started paying attention to Tide is because of the, the mission. Right. You know, my old company was small business focused company. Tide is also a small business focused company. I really, really feel strongly for the small businesses. I mean, they mm -hmm. are the, the the folks that make our lives interesting. Right. Imagine if every single place out there was just a big corporate. It just yeah. wouldn't be interesting. It wouldn't be fun. Uh, you get to go to a farmer's market and get to talk to these people who actually make the cheese, you know, who grow the chickens. You get to yeah. talk to your hairdresser. My hairdresser, I've been going to her for 10 years. I still go every time I'm in L.A. It's crazy. So it's, it's like these relationships, are relationships, the, right? It's relationships. It's real people's lives, and and it's so wonderful to be able to help them and also mm -hmm. get that feedback from them where they're actually so excited about all the work that we're helping them with. Okay. Um, and so that that really drives me. So I love the mission. I, I really feel strongly for it. But what actually ended up making me join is the culture. So when I got my offer after only video interviews, I decided that before I make up my mind. I need to fly in to London to meet the team. Right. <laughs> because the, the whole interview process was remote. It was remote. Yeah. And I at was, the time, that I wasn't was really, remote. of course, today that would be completely normal. But at the time, it was a time where you'd still go and meet in person, right? It was completely unusual. Yeah, yeah. It's very unusual. That I, I really was kind of surprised that I got an offer completely virtually. Yeah. Now you're right. Every interview is not virtual, so it seems kind of boring. Um, actually, I have a funny story there where my husband ended up uh, getting on camera half naked during one of my interviews. Yeah, um, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> he got forgiven, thankfully. Um, but uh, in in the end, I ended up flying out to London to meet to each meet the of the, the folks, so the VPs, the exec, the rest of the team. And what was really important to me is one, people who are super collaborative, low ego mm -hmm. and very driven. And then the second thing, I had a personal thing that I wanted to do. And as I mentioned, goals are very important. 
And another goal that my husband and I had was to start a family. We wanted to have right. a baby in short order. We wanted to, we were thinking one to two years is kind of like the goal. You know, I'm not getting any younger. So at some point you got to have a baby. Otherwise mm-hmm. it's not going to happen. And so I wanted to make sure that before I put the company into that position, I talked to every single person about it and get their reaction to their it. Their reaction live. I, you were asking them face to face. Okay. Face to face. Yeah. They didn't know. They didn't know what I was going to say. And I was very pleasantly surprised. Every single person that I brought this up to was so supportive. You know, a lot of the the leadership team has kids already. So that already comes with the experience. But even the ones who didn't were super supportive. They said, of course, you know, Tide would su- support you. We're here for it. Like we're here to support everyone. And um, I felt very comfortable about coming to Tide and then potentially having a kid soon. Um, so I accepted my offer. Uh, and the next day, literally the day after I flew back from London, I found out I was pregnant. <laughs> Right. So, <laughs> so that's how this is how it went down and and uh which which is great because i already had this conversation so i felt very very, yeah. very good that i did Absolutely. Um, and so i started at tide two months later and um basically yeah i was i was three months pregnant at that point and i worked for six months um before i went on maternity leave and during my six months i uh, basically, I was the first legal hire, so we uh, we grew the legal team. Um, we, we did a lot of really interesting work. But the other thing that um, I, I like to do, and I really ad- advise everybody else to do this if you feel comfortable, is if you see opportunities for improvement in other areas, right? You have ideas about things that could happen, and you can support and you can jump in and actually mm-hmm. do the work or help out. Do raise your hand, especially if you're in a startup. That really gets uh, rewarded, you know, people notice that. And so that's kind of what I did. I saw some opportunities for us to, uh, improve our culture and the, and the people area. You know, we, we, I jumped in, I helped with some of the, um, uh, kind of ideas and, and also some of the execution. And I really enjoyed that. That was really, really fun because uh, as I, I mentioned, culture is like so, so important for me, because I truly believe that you become like the people that you surround yourself with. Absolutely. And so if you spend a lot of time with people that are jerks, you're going to become a jerk. Mm. Um, so I didn't want that. I want to waste my time with jerks. So it's very, very important for us to continue growing that culture. Um, and so when I went to maternity leave, I, I spent about five months off. And I know for people in UK, that sounds like, oh, my God, that's so little. But for Americans, it's actually way more than most Americans get. Yeah. So I felt yeah. so, so thankful that I could take so much time off and I felt ready to come back. Right. Um, I felt like it was a good time to come back. And I uh, got a call from our CFO asking if I would be willing to kind of jump in and help out with the people function while we looked for somebody to lead it. Uh, and so I was very, very excited about, about the opportunity because of my passion for, for, for the area. And so I came back and the first day I came back was the first day of lockdown. So I never got to go back to the office. Literally. <laughs> Yeah, that's that, and and that was so unusual. And so you were starting a second function on top of also leading the legal team, but all remote. How had you know? How did you make it work? Yes. Um. So I think it takes a village, right? So yeah. it's not just me. I'm not like the superstar person who can do all the things on my own. On the legal side, we have an amazing person, our head of legal, Martina who basically has been able to carry 99% of that burden this whole time, right? It's not a burden, it's really an opportunity. But yeah, I can't say, I can't take the credit for, yes, I single-handedly led both functions on my own. No, no, no. I had a lot of support from my team. Mm -hmm. And Martina was a huge part of that on the legal side. On the people team side, we already had some really strong leadership. We had strong leadership in the different locations that we we have. And we already had some really strong um, team members on it. I did have to continue growing the team. We did hire some additional employees. They've been really game changers for us. Um, but it wasn't just me alone. It really is about the team. Um, and it, it's been an amazing journey. I, I, I believe that uh, the main thing that we need to do on the, on the uh, people um, team side is listen to the employees, right? The employees know best what they need, and we, we need to support that. And so it's very, very important for, for us to get that feedback from the employees and then create very transparent action plans and then actually execute in those action plans and then do it again and again and again. And what the cycle of feedback and action does is it creates trust. Mm-hmm. So even though even though you might have issues, you know, I wouldn't say anything you were perfect at Tide. There's so many. I have like a list of 100 things that we're trying to improve. 
but at least it brings a little bit of the understanding from the employee base that yes, there are issues, but we're trying to work on them as a team. Mm -hmm. Things are going to get fixed. There's improvements happening. And mm -hmm. so there's a bit of that forgiveness. There's a little bit more room for us to, to kind of work. And um, I think that is that is the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it's the constant stream of communications. And we'll go into a bit more details also about how you lead your team, how you work with the team and, and with the people at Tide. Um, but before we go into that, I wanted to ask you about your role as Chief Administrative Officer, because CIO is not a very common name of role. So uh, if you could tell us more about what that entails and also your missions uh, with the teams as a CIO. Yes, yeah, yeah. CAO is, is definitely not a well-known title, but we did not want to go with two separate titles because we really do think of legal and people as quite connected. And so that's what we went for the CAO title, uh, even though lots of people don't have any idea what that is. But basically what I like to think about is legal and people are enablement teams, right? That we enable the company. Um, I think a lot of people like to think of those teams, especially maybe the legal team and even the HR team, as more of like risk controllers. Uh, you know, they're, they're no people. You know, you can't do that. You can't do that. They're policy people. They're compliance people. Um, I like to really push against that stereotype. I like to actually position the teams as the teams that are going to enable the growth of the company. We're the ones that are able to fast track the growth. We're the ones who are going to be able to actually allow the company to scale very quickly and with the right talent. And so on the legal team side, um, it's really, really important for us to show the stakeholders the forest for the trees. You know, a lot of times we on the legal team see a lot of things that are happening from the different areas. I mean, we can connect dots for people in different areas. And that's how we enable growth. Um, we also can come up with really creative solutions about some of the kind of roadblocks people have. So I often see that different stakeholders come to us, not with necessarily legal problems, but with just business problems. And mm -hmm. I'm proud to say that the legal team has actually has become like a really great business stakeholder in, in helping solve those business problems. Um, and then we really drive that value um, for for the business because we, we're trying to prioritize our work in, in the areas where the growth is happening. We do want to you know, provide that support from the risk functions. We want to make sure that we are staying compliant. That's very, very important for us as well. But the most focus needs to be on the growth. We're a startup. We need to keep going. We need to compete. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how I like to position the legal team. And it's the same thing for the people team side. I, I think the the people team has become so much more important in, you know, since the pandemic, since the working from home has come in, uh, since kind of the this internationalization of the workforce. Um, and the people team has really become a strategic enabler for the whole company. And if you don't invest in the people team, and if you don't invest in your people, the company can't move quickly. Um, and so the people team really is an enabler. We're the ones who can bring, bring in amazing talent. That talent can continue um, growing the company really quickly. We're also the ones can develop that talent because you have to continue developing the talent for the company to stay competitive. And we're also the ones that can continue, uh, continue to retain the team. And because the longer the person stays at the company, the more institutional knowledge they're getting, the mm -hmm. more that you know, they know how the teams work, the more they become ambassadors of the company. It's very, very important for us to do all those different things. And, and that all propels the company forward. We can move faster. We can, we can really have that kind of growth that we want from a SaaS business. Absolutely. And I think it's fascinating how as a company and our culture brought those two teams together, really, because as you say, right, the enablers uh, for growth and for making sure our TEDs, because that's how we call our employees, are actually, um, you know, uh, set up for success and feel and feel like they are um, developing in their jobs. So about that, because it's it's really down to how we work with the team and and the style of management that we had. Could you could you tell us? a bit more about how you manage those two teams, how, how you lead them? Yeah, so it's, a, it's very, very interesting. So I think leadership and, and management are a lot of times intertwined, but a lot of times it's different things. So the way I think about leadership is leadership is something that is um, intangible. It's, it's a little bit more of a, it's not a day-to-day -day kind of thing where they interact with the person and, and it's leadership. It's really more of a, a person being able to uh, kind of, set standards and set an example for the rest of how the rest should follow. 
And it shouldn't be like a manager direct report relationship. It could be anybody, you know, you don't even have to be a leader in the company to be a leader um, in front of everybody else, right? You could be somebody who's just, you know, beginning in their career, but maybe you're just a superstar and others are gonna follow your kind of your lead uh, and, and because they see how well you're doing. And so to me, it's really about your ways of working, the way you communicate, the way you listen, um, that is leadership to me, being an example to others. Management is slightly different. And management is really about adapting to the people that you're trying to support, right? Because I don't think of uh, management as managing the people down. It's really more about enabling your direct reports and the teams as well to do their best work. Like what support do they need? What is it they're missing that you can provide, right? And some people need direct you know, very in the details support, which means you come in into the meeting with them and you brainstorm together, you come up with solutions together, you help them actually execute. Some people, all they need is a, is a cheerleader. You know, they, they just, maybe they have low confidence, but they have the right skills, they have the right ideas. All you have to do is say, hey, have you got it? This is great. Yes, this is perfect. Like, mm -hmm. I totally trust you. So you have to adapt yourself to the situation at hand, the individual at hand, the project that they're working on, because different projects, could have different um, approaches for different individuals. And so you really have to kind of lean into that. Um, and then finally, though, the big thing at Tide, of course, is autonomy. Um, mm -hmm. We are moving quickly. <laughs> we're competing. We have a lot of things we're trying to get done. We have a big market that we're trying to, to cover, right? You know, India is our first, second market after the UK, right? Um, and then after that, there's going to be others. There's a lot of competition going on. We do not have time to micromanage. We don't have time to mm -hmm. check in with each other. We need to be able to trust our coworkers to do the right thing, to do things the right way. Um, and basically the, the way that we're able to enable that quickly is through setting as a manager, you can set goals, you can set objectives for the team, you can explain the mm -hmm. company strategy so that everybody knows who we're trying, what we're trying to achieve, where we're going, what our values are. And finally, look at and always encourage them to look at data so if they have those objectives and goals in mind they know our values which one of them is data driven they look at data and they, they get those insights they're going to make the right decisions nine out of ten times without your support uh, and of course when they do need the the support hopefully you're there for them and you mm -hmm. make them yeah, absolutely. And I think it's key what you said about um, treating each individual and situation differently because everyone has different needs. And I think it's fantastic that even at a, at a team um, that, uh, that is at a scale that is continuously growing, you know, we still able to provide that, um, that, that very personal management and, and leadership style. Um, and, and I really think that's something that, that defines us as, as a company and, and is definitely built in, in our culture. And talking about the team and, you know, our achievement, obviously we, we are growing very fast and we have different focus at different times of our growth. But one focus that we've had is uh, really to help encourage our female colleagues to have strong, long lasting careers at Tide. Um, can you tell us a bit more about, uh, you know, how we are doing this, how we're supporting our female colleagues to have long, strong careers at Tide? Yeah, obviously, this is this is a huge focus for us. You know, we're constantly staying on top of our diversity numbers. We're also looking at how our performance review cycles, for example, and how our happiness and employee survey numbers are reflecting across our genders and making sure there's no differences in how the people are um, responding to and are being reviewed. I think we might have some uh, connection issues. We are just going to check. Um, please tell us in the comments that if you can uh, both hear us, but I think we might have uh, some connection issues uh, with Lisa. Let us, oh, Lisa is joining back. Oh. I don't know just, what happened. Just, you know, that live stream, that happens you're back <laughs> thank you everyone for uh telling us i think we're back if you can just tell us that we're both back on um that'd be great but yeah lisa you were telling us okay i think we have you back on lisa thank you yeah, yeah. 
Thank you. If you can tell us um, in the comment box, if you can both see us, that'd be fantastic. Um, but yes, you were telling us about how um, we help uh, female colleagues have a strong, long lasting careers at Tide and how it's a focus for us. Yeah, yeah of course. I think uh, it all starts with uh, making sure that people treat it fairly. So that's the first thing that you need to do is to make sure that there's no differences in how our uh, female employees and male employees are being treated. And so what we've done is we've keep a really close eye on employee survey results, um, on the uh, performance reviews and the scores that, uh, the, that the people are getting, on our happiness scores that we get every single week. We keep a really close eye on that and we make sure that the scores are the same. And I'm happy to report in our most recent survey, which we just completed on Friday, they're exactly identical. So that, that's the first step. First step is making sure that there is parity and the, there's no issues. The second step, of course, is um, is um, the making sure that the uh, the salaries are also very fair. And so we mm -hmm. have a very clear system of um, job bands uh, and salary bands for, for each of the different teams. And we make sure that everybody's within band and everybody's paid equally. Um, so that's very, very, very important. The next step is you start looking at representation, right? Where right. do we have representation when we don't, don't have representation? And at Tide, we do have a smaller chunk of our employee base that are women. It's not a 50-50 percentage right now. I think we're something like 35, 65 or something like that. And so we are trying to work on that. Um, part of the issue, of course, is we are a tech business and tech is notoriously known for having inequalities. Um, but there are still teams where we don't have a, you know, equal uh, representation, even on the non-tech team side. So we're looking into that and we're trying to make sure that we're doing that. Um, and then the next thing is leadership. Um, a, a year ago, we've committed to the UK um, that we are going to be getting to 40 percent uh, female representation in the senior leadership um, team by 2023. And we've been making really good progress towards that goal. I think we started with something like 15% or something, 17%. Right. We're mm -hmm. now pushing like 25% or something, which is still, we're still not there, right? We're still not there, but we have put in very clear steps to improve the pipelines for hiring, to make sure that we're looking far and wide for the candidates. And in the end, we are giving the role to the, the best candidate. But we've been lucky that in the last few roles that we've um, hired the, the VPs into have been women that have been the best candidates. Um, and so from, from our point of view, representation in the leadership team is really, really important because from the feedback that I've heard, employees feel empowered if you, that when they see um, more representation at the top ranks. And so what we've done actually is we've created a women's leadership group that meets once a month. And we kind of discuss how we can bring this up. We have a manifesto that we wrote up. And one of the goals that we have is to really provide role models and provide um, the development for the employees that we have and provide the events. So we're about to host a work-life balance event um, mm -hmm. for tonight that is going to showcase not just the women and how they handle it, but also how the partners handle it and how men mm -hmm. handle work-life balance issues. Because it's not just a women's issue. It's really a holistic issue mm -hmm. where women are just a part of it as well. So um, there's just a number of things we have to do. You know, representation is one of them, constantly focusing on the pipelines um, and then developing our employees as well. You know, making sure that they have the equal opportunities, making sure they have mentors. Um, so all of these things are in the works with the women's leadership group right now. That's really, really, uh, really great to hear. And we have, you know, a diversity and inclusion page where we update our numbers and we share uh, our progress. So um, for anyone interested, we, we keep on sharing what we're doing to to improve in that space. So you can you can see that on our website. And, um, you know, Lisa, talking about big focus and achievement, obviously one of um, the, you know, major thing uh, this year has been uh, to announce our launch in India. And before we talk a bit more about this, because I'd love to have your view uh, about you know what what's the most exciting thing for you about our launch in India I just want to make sure we address some comments we've had on our recruitment process I know and I can see a few comments on the side about that because um, we are hiring and growing the team incredibly uh, in India and we've had an overwhelming I think is the right term uh, number of application so can you tell us more about you know what we're doing to improve our processes and to make sure the recruitment process um is as, as smooth as possible yes yes and, and I, I i totally hear you guys i mean it, it has been as val said an overwhelming kind of response 
just to put some numbers on it, because we, we are very data driven at Tide. Yes. Um, in, I believe, in March or April timeframe, we were looking at something like 8,000 applications a month, right? That was kind of our going rate normally across Tide for every uh, every application that was coming in to join Tide. As of April or May, I forget which month it actually spiked in, we went to 30,000, okay? So we went from 8,000, yes. And we're now been at 30,000. We've been basically between 8, 28 and 32,000 for the last four months or four or five months. And so, you know, going from 8,000 to 30,000, we didn't grow our talent partner team within that time frame in that, in that manner. We didn't expect that there's going to be such demand um, from the India market mostly. And some of the other markets are also doing really well, but India specifically. And so we really didn't prepare for it. And, and it's definitely something that, you know, we should have probably expected maybe, but we didn't expect how well the PR team would, will actually be able to tell our story. Um, and I think that's part of the reason we've been so successful is because um, we have been able to tell a story in a very honest way, you know, what we're doing at Tide and what we're doing at Tide and the people team side and gen generally on the employee team side. Um, and so we weren't prepared. And so what's happened is that a lot of folks didn't get a response from us, right? So we were not going, we were able to go through the applications quickly enough um, because we just got completely overwhelmed. So now we've heard your feedback. We have brand new processes. Every single application is going to get a response. Of course, most of them, you know, will get a negative response because only 0.3% of our applicants get offers. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very competitive environment um, to join Tide right now. Um, and so most of you will receive a rejection and, and we will not be in a position, given the, the amount of work that we have and the number of talent partners that we have, to respond to your specific questions in response to that. So please do um, bear with us if you're still waiting on the response. We are trying to get through making sure every single application um, has a response. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it is, it all comes from a, an amazing demand from the market, which we're super grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. And we're looking forward to uh, having some of you join us. I can see in the comment of a few saying uh, that they are joining us soon. So we are thrilled and can't wait to work with you. So this is really exciting. Um, but yeah, no, and, 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 you know, to go into a bit more details about our launch in India, obviously, that's the first, um, you know, new country we're launching in, which is incredibly exciting. Can you tell us a bit more about um, what you're excited for, Lisa? Yeah, I mean, so so first, of course, it's just the, the India market, right? Just on the business team side, not just talking about the people team side, but it's an amazing market, you know, tens of millions of small businesses. It's an entrepreneurial uh, country. It has entrepreneurism in its DNA. So it'd be so, so exciting to actually service that market, to service those small businesses, to help solve their issues. So I'm, I'm just very, very excited about India as a market and just us actually entering it and doing business there. Um, so that's really, really awesome. And of course, amazing talent. You know, we ha now have an opportunity to hire some incredible people in India. And, you know, we do have we do have an office, of course, in Bulgaria. We don't have a, a product that um, we've re released. And it, it is harder. You know, it is harder to tell a story. And I think in India, we have a product. And so it's going to make it much easier for us to tell our employer story as well, because the employees will actually be able to open up the app see how it works, understand the value that we bring, understand how we're actually making our mission into reality. And mm -hmm. it really kind of ties that together, which is very, very powerful, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. So it, that's really great. And then the other thing I'm excited about is to continue to, to um, build our global culture. As I mentioned, we have a Bulgaria office, which is quite large. We have a UK office. We're going to continue building out the offices across the globe. And this is going to allow us to kind of make sure that our values are up to snuff, so to speak, to test mm -hmm. it in the, the Indian employees, to make sure they're working, to continue dialing into what it means to be a tied in um, and, and, and continue working on that. And, and then finally, I think there's going to be a lot of learnings uh, working across the different, um, different cultures, different countries. We're going to need to learn about each other's cultures, right? So we're mm -hmm. going to have to do a lot of trainings, a lot of uh, development for people about what it means to work with somebody in India, what it means to work with somebody in Bulgaria. We all come from different backgrounds, but we can mm -hmm. still appreciate each other, be respectful of each other's cultures and really be one team, which is one of our values. 
Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, having Indian colleagues as well in my team, this is one of the most exciting things I've been able to experience is learning about different cultures, different ways of working. And also, you know, in each and different function, for instance, in the marketing and PR function, it's fascinating, even in your career to learn about how it's done um, on the, in another country. So uh, really something to look forward to for the whole team. Um, and talking a bit more about future, once again, um, I'd love to have your view. If you could tell us a bit more about how you see the future for Tide and yourself. Obviously, there's been a lot happening, um, the pandemic and or growth happening at the same time, adjusting to working from home, the team growing, uh, launching in India. So, um, yeah, how do you how do you see this in the future? And um, yeah, can you tell us a bit more about your vision as well, personally? Yes, I, I have a lot of uh, <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on this, but uh, I'll try to dial down. So first. Um, it's a very different thing to go from one to 100 employees. And then it's a completely different thing to go from a hundred to a thousand. Mm -hmm. It's a completely different beast to go from a thousand to many thousands. Right. Um, you just have a completely different need for processes, technologies, the people team structure, or just general team structures, how teams work together. How do you recruit properly? Um, so all of that is going to be a really, really exciting challenge for us to solve a tide. Um, it, 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 I see a lot of companies, you know, get to a certain scale and stumble. They just get slow. There's a lot of bureaucracy. Um, you know, the challenge is no longer there. People are not feeling connected to the mission. I'd love to solve all those challenges. I like, I like for us to keep working hard. You know, one of our um, big attributes is we are fast moving. We, we like to get the challenges going and we like to solve the big problems. Um, and that's what keeps me at Tide. You know, it's the collaborative culture and the, the, the constant challenge of us expanding. I don't want that to end. And mm -hmm. so how do we keep that hunger? How do we keep that um, collaboration, that culture on the same level as we get to that next scale of over 1,000, 2,000 employees? That is something I'm very excited about. And that is something that I think we're going to have to, you know, figure out together. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to need a lot of the employee input on on best ways to do that and how to be authentic to ourselves in a way. Um, and then also we need to continue to pay attention to our recruitment processes, obviously, obviously how do we keep in line? Um, you know, what, what does it, what does it mean to be a high growth culture and how do we continue hiring the best people out there? Because um, I think as you become a larger corporate player, you start be, stop being attracted to certain types of personalities that potentially are the, actually the personalities that you want. Um, so we want to continue with that culture. And um, so it's going to get, it's going to get complicated. It's going to get dirty, but it's going to also potentially have a lot of upsides for us as we differentiate ourselves as a more stable company, but still a really exciting, fun and high growth culture. Um, and then personally, you kind of mentioned uh, the work-life balance, working outside the office. So, I'm notoriously bad at work-life balance. So it's something that I'm constantly trying to personally work on. Um, and it's very, very important to me because I also want my teams to have that work-life balance. Right. Um, having a baby has helped because uh, there is a, you know, on my calendar. There is no choice. <laughs> there's no choice. Yeah. It's so on my calendar from 5.30 or 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Every single day I'm with, with him. You know, he's okay. almost two years old now. He gets my full attention. So there's not no escaping that. So that's really, really helpful. And on, we, on the weekends, I can't do work because he requires my help. Um, and so that's been helpful. But I do need to continue kind of dialing into that. And I also need to continue working on that with the whole team. Mm -hmm. um, the most recent employee survey that we received showed that while employees are quite happy, they are feeling that burn. They are feeling that you know, work-life balance suffering because as we're, we're all working from home, there's less opportunities to do things and there's a lot of um, ambitions that the company has. So how do we balance our ambitions against the work-life balance and wellness? That is going to be something that we're going to need to work on. And it's a big focus of mine. Um, the other piece is, of course, you mentioned working outside the office or working remotely. Mm -hmm. um, but Tide, we're very progressive about that. We have a very permissive remote working policy. But I'd like to weaponize that, you know, not only use that for recruitment, not only use that for employee engagement and also keeping people, giving people some time back in their day, but also try to dial into what it actually means to have engagement when most of the teams are either working in a different location or working remotely. Um, what does that mean? How, how can we continue that connection, you know, can continue the engagement between the employees while people are in different locations? Um, so that's going to be another challenge for us to solve. And one of the ways that we were thinking about it is supporting the managers and different teams with 
uh, enabling them to have those uh, kind of really meaningful um, uh, meetings and events and offsites and making the most of them. It could be an OKR planning thing, or it could be just the strength finder workshop, or it could just be a get together for beers. But how do we enable managers to have those super productive and uh, really effective uh, meetings? And so that's going to be a really big one. Um, and then the final thing is learning and development. I would say uh, mm -hmm. yeah. we need to continue training up our workforce to meet the demands of the future, right? So right. we yeah. need to keep leaning into it. And we've done quite a bit of work over the last year. You know, we've launched a learning development platform. We have a learning development budget that everybody can take advantage of. Um, we do some webinars and things, but we need to continue investing in people's development, investing in management skills, investing in specific technical skills, um, that way we can grow our employees from Tide and keep them at Tide. Um, right. so we'll, we'll need to definitely do that. Yeah, absolutely. And help them build their career and develop personally as well to make sure they develop in their work as well, which is so important. And I, I and I think uh, we uh, you you talked so well about how your personal life intertwined with your work life and it, it's bound to happen, especially at the moment working from home. But I think um, it's uh, it's really inspiring how we've been trying to accommodate that for everyone at a personal level. And we'll keep on uh, learning from each of our colleagues and, and continue uh, doing this. So uh, really exciting stuff to look forward to. Thank you so much, Lisa. I think it's time to take some questions because I can see a lot of them appearing on the side. Um, and I'm just going to uh, take one right now because I think it's quite interesting. Um, so it's one from uh, Pardi, Peter. Uh, hello, Lisa. Can you talk on the competition Tide is prepared with uh, to take on global and local players across ge geography? Yes, yeah, yeah, I love this question actually. So um, at Tide, we're very competitive. <laughs> we like to compete. We, you know, we are the leading platform for small businesses in the UK, right? If you have the highest number of uh, small businesses on our platform currently. And so we're hashtag winning <laughs> in the UK market, but that's just the first step, right? So how do we continue uh, winning in other markets as well as we continue to expand the uh, across the globe? Um, and also continues uh, to push up against other players as well, because, you know, up until recently, we were only seen as a, you know, a banking app, right? We have a bank account, that's it. But actually, if you've been following us closely over the past year, we've completely expanded our suite of services. You know, we're looking at um, invoicing, invoice protection. We have cash flow insights. We have um, credit builder. We have registration support for you if you want to start a business we have VAT I mean we have so many things now and we've truly I could truly say that we're now a one-stop shop for our small business clients right we're about to launch accounting um, integrations we're going to be launching payments acceptance really quick uh, really soon so the way we compete is number one we need to focus on small businesses right that is our silver bullet. That is basically everything that we need to do. If you look at our, most of our competitors currently in the UK, um, we're talking about Starling, Monzo, Revolut, these types of players, uh, high street banks, they do not focus on small businesses. And that is how we compete. We know what small businesses need. We talk to them on a daily basis. We build products just for the small businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is how we're going to compete. The, the second thing is technology. We are a technology play company. We're not a bank. We are not subject to regulations. Of course, we work with banking partners where we have to make sure that we comply with their requirements, but we're not ourselves a bank and mm -hmm. it doesn't slow us down, which means we can expand quickly across many geos and we can actually be able to uh, use our technology, the, the, all the different uh, services that we're building, instead of being beholden to the bank regulations, to cash reserves that we have to have as a bank and things like that. So um, those are the two ways that we compete is through technology and the lack of um, the banking license, so to speak, and then through the focus on the small business. Yeah. Ooh. Sorry, I think we you got cut off for a moment, but you're back on. Oh, yes. Yeah. Back on. <laughs> You're back on. I, I, I finished. I just said that, you know, the two ways we compete is small business focus and then a, the technology play rather than a banking play. Absolutely. And just to bounce back on, on the small business focus, because I think one of the top comment, what, what is the motto of Tide? Um, we are dedicated to small businesses. We're really here to save them time and money. And that's the motto uh, to say so. But the, the sole focus is really to help small businesses spend less time on their admin so they have time to grow their business. Um, so yeah, 
Uh, just uh, an, another, let, let's take some other um, questions, but just before uh, we do that, I just want to acknowledge a comment from GOT, I, I hope I pronounce it right. Um, we have seen uh, your comment uh, about being a, an ex student We will definitely, um, you know, um, talk to you directly and we'll reach out to you um, to, to make sure we talk to the team about this. Um, now, also, I am seeing some questions about how to join Tide. Just uh, go to uh, tide.co slash careers, uh, and we have all the jobs from all the different locations there. Um, and um, yeah, it, and one other thing I want to, and maybe Lisa, I don't know if you want to add to this about the careers page. Maybe there's some best tips. I know we have a 0.3% of, um, you know, accepting the application. Maybe there's some best tips you could share with the candidates today. Yeah, um, I, I think in terms of like how to improve your the, the likelihood that you're going to be hired, right? Um, I think if you making your resume as succinct as possible, right? We don't want to see like a five page resume with all, all your experience. Think about the talent partners. They're looking at 30,000 different applications. They don't have a lot of time. You need to grab their attention immediately, right? So how do you look at the job description and sell yourself? and tell your story in the best way that fits mm -hmm. that job description. So the job description is talking about, you know, somebody who can be a jack of all trades, can juggle a lot of things. Tell that story. Tell them about how you handle five different projects, right? In the resume, you can do that. You could say, you know, pro project manager for blah, 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 handled five projects at the same time, whatever. So how do you tailor that resume? Don't just send in the resume that you have and the cover letter that you have that you use for every single other company and expect a positive result. Um, so it is it is important to invest a little bit of time into trying to basically tell your story in your cover letter in your resume. Fantastic. And we have another uh, question from Richard uh, that I'm going to make uh, appear on screen. What's your recommendation on how to integrate quickly to Tide once you have joined? I guess this is the question. Yeah. Yeah, great one. So we we do have a pretty um, strong onboarding process. So in the beginning, there's going to be a whole onboarding day where there's a corporate onboarding. We learn about the IT and systems and all the different reading material. And so the best way to kind of engage and also you get an onboarding plan, which kind of sets out the people you get to meet with, um, the types of, again, reading materials that you, you can click through. We have a whole confluences pages full of summaries of how we do OKRs, the language that we use at Tide, past presentations from all hands, interviews with different leaders at Tide. Um, so I really think that the best way to do it is one, read as much as possible, try to understand, ask questions when you don't understand something. Um, and that's, that's probably the best advice I've received in my career is always be curious, don't assume things. And so always ask those questions, don't assume things, um, read mm -hmm. the information. And then the second thing that's really important try to meet, meet as many people as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Tide is a very, very fun kind of collaborative environment. People love to meet each other. If you're coming into the office, do come in. We're going to have uh, weekly events where you can get lunch with people. For, we're having one on Friday. We're going to start having them on Tuesdays. We're going to have ice cream socials, get togethers. Do try to attend. Do try to meet people from different teams. And then ask your manager, who are those people that I'm going to be working with really closely? Mm -hmm. Meet each one and then maybe set up even follow up meetups. So I, I think a, a lot of working in a startup is personal relationships in a way. You kind of got to know what who, who people are, uh, what teams they're on, how the organization fits together. Um, and so spent a lot of time figuring that out. Look at the our HR system that shows the, um, the org chart, uh, the mm -hmm. different teams that we have, ask questions about that. Look at our strategy presentation. Um, we have a whole strategy deck of what it means to you know, be a tie, what we're trying to achieve. So there's a lot of different materials and people that you can speak with. Um, but yeah, that, that, no better way than to get that information and to talk to people. Absolutely. And there's something that I've loved uh, doing that I've been asked a few times uh, is to be someone's buddy, you know, when they just join tight and you're their buddy. So you can, you know, they can come to you and ask any questions if maybe they don't want to ask their manager because they've been chatting to them for the whole day. And uh, you just turn around to your buddy. And something else that I've been asked this week actually was to uh, to become a mentor for a new joiner. So and, and all those stuff are happening quite organically because, um, you know, I think uh, I think this is definitely one of our strengths. We, we, we like each other and we like to collaborate with each other and learn from each other. 
absolutely. Um, some some great questions as well. Um, let's uh, let's take one from Amit, who is asking us. Uh, I'll just show it on screen. What is the future plan of the entity in India? Okay, so I'm not sure if this means like the legal entity or just the our, our India plans, but I'm assuming it's our India plan. So um, right now, what's happening, which is very very excited, is we are we have launched our beta in india with 500 members so we already have 500 members that are testing our prod product as of this month um we are going to take a lot of learnings from that experience right so we're going to learn about how they go through our flows how they do payments are there any bugs in the system how can we make sure member support has the best experience how is the onboarding process like and then apologies i guess there's some construction going on um and then the second thing is uh, we're going to take those learnings we're going to improve the app and then we're going to launch it to even more people in the coming months and so it, it's really really exciting we're, we're we're basically continuing to build the app we're adding more features right now the app is basically a bank account which is great you know that it, it, it serves the needs you can do payments but we want to be so much more. We want to be that financial one-stop platform for small businesses. And so we're going to add invoicing in there. We're going to add expensing in there. We're going to add team cards in there. So there's going to be a lot more features that are going to be added before we go out to the wider market. Um, and our plan is to then expand the exponentially. You know, we, we're going to continue building the product for India. We've looked into what the India market needs. And there's some very specific items that are different from what the UK market needs. So for example, VAT protection in the UK definitely doesn't really have the same kind of thing in, in India. So we're, we're seeing what are the pain points of small businesses in India and how can we best support them? Um, so that that's kind of our plan right now. And then we also have two offices. You have a Hyderabad office and we have a Gurgaon office. And so we are scaling those very quickly. We have over 300 employees in the, between the two offices currently. Um, and we will continue investing in that. You know, I'm, I'm expecting the our India headcount to probably go over 600 by end of next year, maybe more. We haven't done our annual planning yet, so please don't quote me on this. Um, but it is we're going to continue investing in the in the India market from the employee perspective as well. So yeah, lots of things going on. Yeah, no, absolutely. And actually, um, a great follow up question from Leona uh, asking, is it temporary or long term planning in India? I don't know if you want to share a bit more about this, Lisa. Oh, I mean, it's it's 100 percent long term. I mean, if you look at our um, hiring, if you look at our leadership team, it's completely long term. Right. So we we have we have a physical office in Hyderabad. As I mentioned, we do have over 300 folks now permanently working for our India entity. Um, and we have some very strong leadership that we've hired, right? That is driving this forward. We have Gurjot at the helm, who's running our, our CEO India, who's who's running the operations. We have a very strong uh, operational team as well. We're now hiring uh, the marketing leadership as well in, in India, and we're continuing to invest into the tech leadership. So um, right now, India has the highest number of employees out of all of our offices. OK, so it's definitely a long term plan for us. We love the India market. We love our India co-workers. Um, so it, it's just a wonderful place for us to continue investing in. No, absolutely. And uh, I think we probably have time for just one more questions. And I'm just going to uh, bring one from uh, Narendir uh, about any update on process, uh, um, you know, process of application. I don't think we can uh, address this one exactly, but maybe just to reiterate what we're doing uh, at the moment, Lisa, around recruitment in India. Uh, yeah, if you could please just, just tell us again. <laughs> Yeah, so our, um, our recruitment processes are global, right? So we don't differentiate how we do recruitment between the different uh, locations that we hire. We have a very straightforward process. So the first uh, step is that the talent partners review the resumes and then decide on who fits the, the bill. The resumes usually either get passed over to the hiring manager or the talent partner decides themselves to do a screener interview. So usually a talent partner then will do the first interview which usually will be on zoom or might, might be on the, on the phone um and then after that it gets well, if it's a positive outcome it goes to the hiring manager and then the hiring manager does what we call functional screen if the functional screen goes well it goes to the final step which is usually a series somewhere between two and four interviews with the different stakeholders you know this could be um a this could be a skip level um this could be across um 
functional stakeholder, if the person has to work with a lot of cross-functional stakeholders, it could be a managerial interview. If you're becoming a manager, we need to make sure that the managers that we bring in have the manager skills. So that that's the process. And for certain leadership positions, we have the final step, which would be a meeting with one of our executives, because we do need to make sure that if we are hiring, let's say a VP or, or head of, that they lead a certain standard. Um, so that's that's kind of the process that we follow for all teams across Tide, um, and there's no difference in that. Fantastic. And um, I think uh, hopefully that has answered most questions. And once again, um, I can, I can you know, we have some questions about um, different application and positions. Uh, please chat to uh, the person you are uh, already in contact with. And if you want to see our open positions, because I'm just going to uh, share this uh, very nice comment from Tarun saying, Tide is in safe hands with Lisa. Like your thought process and plan to, uh, to take Tide forward, will apply. Well, um, that's great. We're really looking forward uh, to all the applications. Um, you can check all the open position in all our different offices across UK, Bulgaria and India on tide.co slash careers. Um, and yeah, we would uh, would love to um, to get your applications and we are looking forward to meeting the, the, the colleagues that have said uh, in the comments that they will be uh, joining in the in the next few weeks. That's very exciting. So thank you again so much all for joining us. Lisa, thank you so much uh, for giving us so much information and insight about, you know, the legal and people team at Tide, um, how we plan to expand and, and, and how the, the whole recruitment process. I think that was uh, hopefully very valuable to everyone watching us today. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. Thank you. This has been really, really great. And everybody, I'm super pumped for the ones of you who are joining. Um, excited to meet you. Do ping me when you join. You're welcome to Slack me. I'm, I love to get those messages. And uh, for those of you who are thinking about applying to Tide, do it. But make sure your resume is tailored to our application. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you again so much, Lisa. All right. See you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.